Hello my lovelies and today I'm going to be talking to you about a device called a P-Scan. Look, you can see it there. And I'm going to be explaining to you why if you own an, uh, a Rover Group car, an MG, a Rover, a Land Rover or even a Lotus Elise or a K-Series Caterham, why you might need one of these in your car armory or carmory if you prefer i quite like that The YouTube channel's not any good, but he's a nice guy. Sorry, Mr. Bolton. To make YouTube videos with. Oh, you had me at YouTube videos. Let's go, Boaty. Okay, like all cars, uh, cars of the Rover Group have some form of electronic brains, and those brains are controlled and repaired and generally fertiled about with, in the case of uh, Rover Group cars, by something called a T4, with which uh, all dealers were equipped. So, for example, if you wanted to program a new key fob or something of that nature, you would need to go to a dealer who would use their T4 machine to carry out that particular task. And, of course, charge you handsomely for so doing. Now, obviously there are no dealers knocking around anymore and T4s are indeed few and far between. So a very clever chap by the name of Philip developed this, a P-Scan. And basically what it is, is it's um, some electronic doings that I don't even pretend to begin to understand that will give dealer level access approaching that of the T4 uh, to any vehicle supported by the system, so any vehicle within the Rover Group. So you may well ask, why not just use a generic, cheap uh, OBD reader like this fellow here that are easily available on eBay and similar websites for not much money? Well, the reason is, is that the cars that we're talking about in the, uh, in the Rover Group they are not OBD2 compliant, which is what these readers are. They're OBD2 readers or possibly EOBD readers. Uh, and they're simply not fully compliant with these vehicles. Indeed, um, Rover and MG petrol engines prior to MEMS3, so <clears throat> older than about 2001, they're not OBD2 compliant at all. So those scanners are going to be absolutely useless. They're just not going to work. And even a super posh and relatively expensive unit like this, my fabulous King Bolin K7, which I've recommended on another video and will continue to recommend. But for these vehicles, even this will not fully converse with the vehicles in question. It'll go so far, but like many girls of my youth in Redditch nightclubs, it won't go all the way. Now, I'm not going to bang on and on about this because the best thing that you can do is to simply go to www.pscan.co.uk and have a look at that website and that will tell you absolutely everything that you need to know about that device. What I'm going to do is to show you how it works. Okay, so you've been to the website, you've been convinced, and you've ordered one of these little chaps. It will have been delivered quickly and safely, and you've got it in your clammy little hand. What happens next? Well, what happens next is you download the software for it. Now, this isn't scary. You can do it. You won't need to get one of your four-year-old relatives to explain to you how to install it all on your computer. 
The website will give you step-by-step -step instructions and if I can do it, anybody can. Now, there was an unexpected benefit and bonus uh, that I discovered with this. And it's this. This machine here is a Sony Veo, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. And it's a little machine that I bought about 100 years ago and it was exceedingly expensive. I paid about £2,000 for this. Uh, I can't remember how old it is, but it's seriously old. It's running uh, Windows XP business, for goodness sake. And this was sitting up in my office, and I never, ever expected to use this little machine again. Which is a shame, because it's a fabulous machine. Still works absolutely properly. And I was just keeping it, because it's got a load of photographs and videos and all sorts on it that I haven't yet managed to uh, move onto another device. So I was delighted to discover that the PScan software is compatible with a lot of older machines, including this one. So I was able to install the PScan on this machine, which has no other use for me, and this will now be my dedicated diagnostics computer. So that's uh, an unexpected and rather fabulous bonus. But that might also be useful for you because like me, you might have an old laptop lying about that's still perfectly serviceable, but that you're not using. Perhaps you've replaced it with something a bit more up to date. Well, you might be able to put it back to use. Installing the software really is quite straightforward. If you um, go through all of the steps that are suggested on the website and there is support available should you need it. I managed it all on my own and I'm very, very proud of myself. Although it did take two goes because I'm a bit thick. And that, my lovelies, is that. You really are ready to go. But what about using it in the kind of real life situation in which many of us uh, will regularly find ourselves. Well, when I bought my most recent acquisition, my 2005 Land Rover Freelander, it came with a key, a key fob, and a spare key. But there was no fob for the spare key. Now, a friend of mine very kindly gave me a fob from his old Freelander. The fob worked and it had a working battery. So what was needed was to code the new old fob to my car. And I had a go at doing that using the P-Scan. Now that would cost a couple of bob if you were to take it to a Land Rover dealer and get it done. But obviously I'm not going to do that, am I? Because I've got this little fellow here. So armed with that, I jumped into the Freelander um, followed all of the uh, instructions which are helpfully there for you on the website. Now, I didn't record myself doing this, and to be perfectly honest, I didn't record it in case I made a howling arse of it and looked a bit silly. But as it happens, I did it absolutely perfectly. First time, the system works brilliantly, exactly as it should, and I now have a full set of spare keys for my Land Rover. Complete with posh key ring. Look, there's the fob and it all works, wonderful. But of course, I didn't film that, did I? So that's of no use to you and it's of no use to this video. However, the car that I bought before that, which many of you will be familiar with, is Wetleg, my MGF. Now, when I bought my MGF from the Island of Wight, again, it came with one key, one key fob. Didn't come with the key ring, I added that myself. And look, it's a posh one. Fine Italian leather, Il Ponte. And the reason there was only one set of keys was that the owner had mislaid the spare set of keys, but he found them and he posted them to me. And thanks to the good old British postal system, they never arrived. Is that the end of the world, I hear you cry? Well, no, it isn't. Because 
I have a good friend who many of you will know, Captain Mustard of the Project Nigel channel. And he gave me this rather splendid key fob, which I will show you here from his stash. And we've tested it, it works, and it's got a working battery in there. So together, let's have a bash at coding this key fob to this MGF. Well, that's not the MGF. Those are the keys for it. The MGF is actually over there. And I'll take you there now and we'll have a go. Now, I'm genuinely doing this for the first time. I haven't had a practice run. Uh, I haven't used this system for a week or so, so I've probably forgotten how to do it. Uh, but that will be more valuable for you because any of you who've watched my channel, you know that I'm a complete bumbling idiot. So you can be assured that if I can manage to do something at all, then you will do it perfectly and slickly and in the shortest of order. So, um, right, let's go and have a go. I'll meet you at the MGF. Okay, so you join me here in the MGF, which is quite small and I am quite large and this is not going to be easy. Job number one, find the OBD port. I'll give you a clue. It's on the driver's side. It's in the fuse box, which you just undo a couple of plastic screws to access. And it's up there on the right hand side, look. So we take this end of the doings and we plug it in. God, this was easier on the Freelander. You need to be an acrobat to get under there. Uh, right, so that ends in. And this end plugs into your computer. I don't have enough hands. I don't have enough room. Oh, hello. <sighs> right, so the computer, clever thing that it is, recognises that it's plugged into a port. I'm going to select English, given that that's my language of choice. Hit on next. And as we can see, communication has happened and PScan is doing all sorts of clever things. Let's make that a bit bigger. Shall I put you on the seat? Hang on. Oh, there you go. Right, is that better? I'll I'll enlarge you. As the actress said to the bishop. Ah, there we are. Now you can see properly, can't you? Uh, right, okay. So, what we do now is... Um, right, alarm immobile. Alarm immobiliser and body. That's what we're going to want, isn't it? Click on that. That brings up a choice of doings. Okay, now, being an earlier MGF rather than a TF, we are working with the, I think it's Lucas, 5AS system. Oh, now. Put the ignition on. Apologies for all the shakiness. I'm doing this in a highly unprofessional manner. Click on next. Ah, and there we have immobilizer fob programming. Let's hit that. Right, now you do need to go through these in order. So, first of all, you read the instructions so that the system is sure that you know what you're doing. There you go. Have a read of those. Then we're going to test the horn uh, because it's the horn that tells you um, when the uh, fob is uh, coded.
Right, you heard that. So, um, only start fub programming if you heard the Well, horn. we heard the horn, did we not? So, start fub learning. Warning, all immobilizer fubs will be deleted. Start fub learning again to confirm. Yeah, when you code a new uh, fub, it wipes the existing fub and you code them all together. That's fine. So, start fub learning. Press the lock button on first fob once per second until the horn sounds. Right. Okay, here we go. There we go. Once the horn has sounded, repeat the process for each fob in turn. Well, we've only got, we have one other. There we go. So that is, or certainly should be, both fobs programmed. Right, so we press the stop fob learning. Finished, switch ignition off, then on again. Right, let's test it. Here is the original fob. We're in the car, let's show you the lock. Oh, that works. There we go. So that's the original fob. Now, this is the one that we've just programmed. Let's try this. Perfect, job done. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward, and a whole lot cheaper than having to go to a dealer to do all of this. And this is just one example of what the P-Scan can do. It's a tremendous bit of kit and I will take you through more of the capabilities in future videos. And just to confirm that, original fob. Newly programmed fob. Jobs are good. So there we have it, the P-Scan. And I unhesitatingly recommend this to anybody who's driving a Rover Group vehicle from the 1990s, 2000s, uh, etc. As I said before, it really is an essential bit of kit for your car arsenal, or carsenal, as I've now decided we should call it. Do check out the website. It's www.pscan.co.uk. That will give you all of the details that you're going to need. And finally, a note on price. Um, this is at a very, very sensible price point. So that shouldn't be an obstruction to you having one. You're not going to have to sell an internal organ or remortgage your house. So do check it out. That website address again is www.pscan.co.uk. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's given you some um, valuable information and insight. And if you don't have one of these, then I hope you go out and buy one. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you soon on another video. Cheers now, bye bye. Listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Boats would like to express his heartfelt appreciation to his amazing channel members. Alain Cyril, Project MGTF, Rosé-Bas-CH-Pêche-Pêche-KS, Chef-Badaniel, The Greenwood, Typhoon Cat, Richard Mahon, Dinosaur Dad, GPS OMG, Car Crazy Norwegian, Tricia Alderman, Black Lines, Classic Wheels Wells, Sha Brown and Mickey Jeffries. Your support means the world to him, you all fucking legends and they thanks you from the heart of his bottom.